Miami's hot shooting cooled off in game three, missing shots from deep and at the rim again and again and again. And the Nuggets got a historic performance from Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. What adjustments did Denver make and how will Miami respond in game four? We answer that on today's final edition of Locked on Heat. You are locked on heat. Your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. I'm Wes Goldberg here with David Ramil. However, you might be tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app. Thanks so much for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. And when you enter the promo code locked on NBA, they're going to throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. Uh, recording this just a few minutes after the Miami Heat lose to the Denver Nuggets 109. To 94, uh, David, the Heat had a chance to take a lead in these NBA Finals after winning Game 2 in Denver. Uh, they missed that opportunity because they missed so many shots at the rim. They shot 37% in this game. Jimmy Butler, 11 of 24. I counted that uh, uh, like 19 or 20 missed shots right at the basket yeah. uh, in this one. You think about everything that happened in this game. Jamal Murray, uh, Nikola Jokic, triple doubles, all these things. They played well, the Nuggets did. I don't, I, I'm not saying this to take any kind of credit away from them, but to me, I feel like if the Heat are m- making a lot more of those shots at the basket that they normally make, then this entire game has a different kind of tone because every time Jimmy Butler missed or somebody else missed at the yep. basket, it felt like the Nuggets were grabbing the rebound and, and basically getting uh, in transition and easy buckets that way. Yeah, the rebounding battle, a, a clear advantage for Denver, 58 rebounds to just 32 for Miami, 33, excuse me, for Miami. Uh, and you're exactly right. They were able to pick off those rebounds, kick off their transition game, and Miami's defense wasn't set. They weren't hitting shots. And especially those shots at the rim where you're thinking you can close the gap, take a lead in the game, because it was tied after one quarter. But in the second quarter, they just went away from They couldn't hit anything at the rim. They couldn't hit anything from beyond the perimeter. And all those shots just demoralizing this team. They just couldn't seem to get any kind of momentum going. And Denver just capitalizing on that. Eric Spolster after the game talking about Miami losing the battle of physicality, losing the battle of the 50-50 ball going in Denver's way. Uh, and just the sheer identity that they exerted on Miami in today's game three, something that we hadn't seen either in game one or two. And it was a, a lopsided victory in Denver's favor. Uh, it was the best game the Nuggets to play this entire series. I For don't sure. think that's a stretch to say. And this yeah. was kind of what I think we expected to see from the Denver Nuggets uh, in this series. Their, their ball movement off and on the ball was crisp. Jamal Murray finally getting going. Uh, what did he finish with? I mean, a triple double, 34 points, 10 yeah. rebounds, 10 assists. Jokic with 32 points, 21 rebounds, 10 assists. Historic, I mean, again, yeah. with the Will Chamberlain numbers with him. It's been a We hadn't seen this. We hadn't seen that level of triple-double dominance from Jokic. We have not seen that version of Jamal Murray, who was just in full-on villain mode in this game. Every time the Heat were about to make a run, it just felt like Jamal Murray was hitting a really big shot, a yeah. falling away two-pointer or a three-pointer off of the screen. That two-man game with Jokic was finally getting going. Credit Denver. I think you have to start there with what, what happened in this game because – not only offensively were they more purposeful, I thought defensively they were closing out on Miami shooters better. The Heat 11 of 35, just 31% from three-point range in this one. Um, the Nuggets just went out and and beat the Heat on their home court. You got to start there. But I want to throw it back to Jimmy Butler too because there's a lot of talk about like when are we going to get playoff Jimmy, right? And going into this game, a lot of people, hey, are you going to be playoff Jimmy? Hey, are you going to be playoff Jimmy? And he just kept saying, I'm going to make the right play. I'm going to make the right play. Right. Well, Denver was not overhelping on him in this one. No. And so it, the game kind of lent itself to him being more of an aggressive scorer. He was a more aggressive scorer. We had not seen him this aggressive since that Milwaukee series, 24 field goal attempts, 22 in three quarters. Right. He didn't really play all that much in the fourth quarter by the time it got away from them. Um, what did you think about Jimmy Butler's performance? Because to me, this was the closest thing we saw to Milwaukee playoff Jimmy, uh, unfortunately, in terms of aggression level but he just wasn't making the shots that we were accustomed to seeing. Yeah, that's, that's basically what it comes down to. I mean, he was attacking the basket. He was getting good looks. The jumper wasn't falling. It looked a little flat. In fact, a lot of those, I mean, he was one of four from three-point range. 
clearly still again looking to you know bail himself and the offense out with that three-point shot it's not within rhythm the way it was against the milwaukee bucks where he's scoring a bunch and he's just kind of feeling it from the perimeter that wasn't the case today he wasn't able to hit at the rim wasn't able to hit in his mid-range jumper wasn't able to hit from the perimeter kind of just symbolic of this whole heat team in general where as far as where jimmy goes that's how far miami goes but the same could be said of bam and a bio he shot just 33 percent, 7 of 21 mm. from the floor missing a lot of open looks at the rim 22 points on 21 shots yeah no it's unbelievable uh, it, it was just those those momentum killers and and then denver was able to capitalize it and, and just find those shots and just be able to just, just shut down Miami. I, I don't know. You asked a question about you when you first brought up the point, Miami, maybe they could have given themselves a chance to win had they made those shots. And at the same time, we both acknowledge that Denver played a hell of a game. You got incredible performances from Jokic and Murray. If Miami had been able to hit those shots, maybe they don't win the game, but they can't put themselves in the position to lose it as badly as they did by missing a lot of makeable shots at the rim especially when you're not hitting three-point shots you know a lot has been made in this series about miami's hot shooting from beyond the perimeter and while that's still the case that miami's best chances of winning any game are with their shooting well from beyond the three-point line so many shots at the rim that they missed and that kind of ignites their offense if you're hitting shots at the rim then it kind of feeds itself and again you can slow down uh denver's transition yep. offense so it was just kind of just steamrolled. After that first quarter, there was a lot of momentum there. It felt like Miami was starting to get things going. And then in the second quarter, just all collapsed from that point forward. That third quarter was really bad. Outscored 29 to 20. And then the four, in the beginning of the fourth quarter, it wasn't that great either, even though the, you look at the total fourth quarter, 27 to 26, Nuggets edge. So not that bad. But again, that, that whole third quarter in the beginning of that fourth quarter, that's when Denver just took yeah. over that game. And it ended up being basically a blowout. We got Nikola Jok Jovic minutes at the end. That's kind of where we were Jonas Aslan minutes. Yeah, I mean, 29, not really, 29 seconds, barely even minutes. But yeah, to your point, um, not the version of, not not when I wanted to see Haslam in these finals. I wanted to see it sort of the other way if right. we were going to see UD in his last right. finals. Um, you mentioned the turnovers and the transition and all that stuff. Just four turnovers for the Heat in this one. Otherwise, a very clean basketball game. I actually thought that they got good looks in yeah. this game. It's supposed to the um, same thing. Yeah. The problem is when you're missing those shots and then you're not getting – I shouldn't even say that you're not necessarily getting back on defense. Just when you're missing them at fine, the right? rim, yeah. your, your whole offense too kind of crashes because maybe they're looking for offensive rebounds or something like that. Miami did not get nearly enough of offensive rebounds in this game. Um, but you know, the it, because they weren't getting the turnovers, Denver yeah. was grabbing these defensive rebounds off these misses and just sprinting the other way like it was a turnover. So I know that they didn't get a lot of turnovers, but it just felt like the Nuggets were getting those transition points as if the Heat had – coughed up 24 turnovers instead of four turnovers but even beyond the transition points uh you have to give credit to denver's off-ball movement their cutting was phenomenal tonight whether it was a two-man game between aaron gordon and jamal murray or christian brown igniting denver's offense particularly in that third quarter he was sensational I, you know you saw what happened in game two when he was just back cut to death by duncan robinson today was his turn to return the favor and he really did an incredible job of just moving without the ball getting the position and that was as demoralizing as anything you stop Jokic, you stop murray who are on fire for most of the game and then all of a sudden you've got christian brown coming in baseline going finishing in for a dunk you got aaron Gordon doing the same thing too often and just it just kept piling up miami just had no response it's a great nuggets game one stat before we uh go to our, to our next segment here Jokic and Murray made history. Uh, this is the first time in the regular season or playoffs that teammates had triple doubles with 30 or more points in the yeah. same game. I mean, they dominated Jokic uh, or the, the Denver's stars, Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, took this game over in a way that Miami's stars really didn't. It was not an efficient game for Jimmy Butler. It was not an efficient game for Bam Adebayo and Jokic and Murray had their way. And it's going to be up to now Miami. To try to bounce back. One other point, though, that I'm not done, I think is a good one that you brought up that we should follow up on is just the lack of help that yeah. they got in this one. We're going to talk about that next when we get to Blame Pie. But first, David, tell the listeners about our sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. When it comes, or for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle, every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay's guaranteed fit, you can be sure every part you need fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or you get your money back because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. 
When you shop on eBay Motors and with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. That's all. It's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay's guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only and exclusions do apply. Thanks for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Every day is we're going to be back Friday morning with an in-depth look at what the Heat can do to bounce back in game four. But, David, that smell you smell. It's not the smell of whatever was in this room, whatever kind of food, maybe a little bit of coffee before we started using it to recording it. No, that smell is unfortunately the smelly smell of blame pie. We have 10 slices of blame pie to give out. Uh, do we want to start with Jimmy Butler, even though we already we talked at length about him, but how many slices should he get? I, I think you can give two a piece to him and Bam and Bio. That's right. Uh, for, 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 yeah, for, uh, they're both offensive inconsistency. It just it was very odd to see them both missing, missing with, with such regularity at the rim, getting good looks. The shots look flat, uh, clanking off rims. It's just very atypical for what we've seen from both players, especially Bam in this series has been very good. Jimmy struggling of late as he continues to recover from injury. No excuses. He just he Shots that were at the rim, layups, uh, everything that he could have knocked down, not doing so between the two of them. Uh, again, it's very, very surprising. Spo sort of gave Denver credit for their size, but it kind of also felt like he didn't. It was just, it felt like when he was saying that in post game, it was sort of something to say, mm -hmm. like kind of the platitudes. I, I, he did mention that he wants to go back and watch the film and kind yeah. of see what happened offensively. I did not think it was Denver's size that bothered Jimmy Butler. I thought he got the looks that he wanted. I thought he was really aggressive early at 10 points in that first quarter. Uh, and then he just sort of slowed down. I don't know if it's the ankle to your point. I don't know if it's just the wear and tear. The guy's been playing. It's his 20th playoff game. He's been playing 40 minutes a game at this age, at 33 years old. Like, I don't know that maybe it's everything combined. I just, I, I don't want to give Denver credit for Jimmy Butler missing the shots because I thought he got the shots that he wanted. Yeah. Like, this was the most aggressive that we see in Jimmy Butler. And one of the things that Denver was doing in games two is they were overhelping on Jimmy. They have Aaron Gordon defending Jimmy Butler, and they would overhelp constantly on Jimmy Butler and turn him into a passer instead of a scorer. Well, today they did not overhelp. They let Aaron Gordon just defend his position. For the most part, they threw double teams here and there, and Jimmy Butler got his switches, and they tried to kick out and help on the switches when it was like Jamal Murray or Bruce Brown on him or something like that. But a number of times where Jimmy Butler got where he wanted and just missed the shot point blank, you yeah. know? So um, I'm looking at it right now. and we, Even as we're recording this, I'm watching the video of Jimmy's layups package, and, and it's just like he's attacking the rim. He's going at Jamal Murray, clanks the shot, goes at Nikola Jokic, gets by him, Clanks the shot, takes a jumper, misses it completely. My concern for the Heat is if you're getting these looks right now, if you're Jimmy Butler, is there any hope that he can respond and have a better game? Or is this just what we're left with with Jimmy Butler at this stage in the playoffs? Because we talked about this coming out of that Boston series. We saw him in that locker room after game seven limping around. Yeah. You know, it was just – this was my fear for the Miami Heat is if you – if if – Playoff Jimmy, the way that we saw him against the Milwaukee Bucks, doesn't exist. And the Denver Nuggets are going to invite him to be a scorer, and he just can't do it because physically he just doesn't have it anymore. I, I, that's my biggest concern walking away from this game from the Miami Heat. Not the three-point shooting, not the lack of help, and any of that stuff. Because I think the Heat, if you're getting this kind of stuff from Jokic and Murray, uh -huh. then you at some point you're just going to need Jimmy Butler to have a huge game. And, yeah. and I think he recognized that tonight, but he just couldn't do it. Well, it doesn't help that Bam couldn't compliment him either. I mean, between the two of them missing such easy shots, it's a good point. I, I, I you know, <laughs> the thing is with Jimmy and Bam scoring so easily or able to score more easily, that kind of sets up the playmaking aspect and you get those better wide open looks. I think Miami still had wide open looks from three. They just weren't able to knock them down. But the scoring has to come from somewhere. You're not getting calls in your fight favor. That's not a point that I want to belabor for too long. But the easy shots, you're missing those. The mid-range jumpers, you're missing those. you got to find some avenue for scoring, and I just don't know what that next step could be. I mean, it, Jimmy has to continue to attack aggressively, and I think we'll continue to see that as the norm throughout the rest of the series. And then if those shots are falling, then again, the defense will collapse on him. You'll get the, that help from Denver, and maybe you can spray it out to some three-point shooters in the hope that maybe they'll knock it down a little bit more effectively than they did today. That's where you have to start is a three-point shooting. This was Jimmy Butler's highest scoring game of the series, by the way. And we're talking about this like it's his worst game. But the reason we're talking about it like it's its worst game is because it was so just obvious. 11 and the reason it was, That's so good. I mean, it's not. I mean, yeah, it was not efficient for a game for him. And look, two rebounds, four assists, two turnovers. Like, that stuff wasn't good. Yeah, he was. Like, that stuff's not good. 
uh, in terms of how he loaded Not like up. empty calories. And know. then, yeah, exactly. And, and you think about, all right, well, defensively, shouldn't he be shutting off Jamal Murray's water? And he couldn't because Jamal Murray was awesome tonight. Yeah. Um, credit Denver. They, they were they were stringing those pick and rolls out wide. They were they were having Jamal Murray run that pick and roll with Jokic and then again, stringing him wide and going through another pick and try to get Jimmy Butler off of him. Great stuff by Denver. They adjusted. They made all the they they pu- pushed the right buttons and pu- pulled the right levers offensively. But um, the other reason why I think Jimmy Butler's poor game feels so heavy in this one is because Miami's shooters weren't making shots. Yeah, no, right. Yeah, and yeah. so uh, eleven of thirty five overall. Max Struess one of four. Gabe Vincent one of six. This is from three point range. Uh, Jimmy Butler one of four. I don't know why he took four of them. Kyle Lowry one of four. Uh, Caleb Martin two of five. And he was the best out of all of them, other than yeah. Duncan Robinson, who was efficient with three of six from three point range. None of those guys really stepped up. I, I think we could start with Max Struess, who had he was four of seven in in the first quarter in game two, and he just had no kind of uh, he did not have that kind of impact. And Gabe Vincent, I think you got to start with the starting the starting group, you know, who were all in the negative plus minus one of seven from Max. Uh, you know, it, he, he struggled this series. Uh, I think he he might be either pushing himself too much defensively and just doesn't have anything left offensively. He, you had a, he had a big first quarter in game two. It was just enough to help Miami build a, a cushion to withstand the eventual Denver comeback. That was not the case. Uh, missing wide open looks as well. And, you know, very clearly, and those are the thing is you, you hit those shots in the first quarter of game three and it changes the complexity completely. You've got a different vibe to you. You know, you're kind of feeling it a little bit. You have to, from a defensive standpoint on Denver's side, you have to be able to close out on Struce. There were times there where he had wide open looks and they didn't care because they didn't think he was going to be able to knock those down. And so it just kind of piles on one. Again, you know, the three-point shooting didn't exist and the, you're able to collapse on Jimmy and Bam in the paint, make those diff- shots much more difficult for those two scores. And again, if you spray it out to a three-point shooter and they're not knocking it down, where's the source of your offense? Gabe Vincent was a bad game for him. Seven points, two of 10 overall, three fouls in the first half. How much credit uh, do you give Denver's defense? Because I think they did th- things well at the yeah. same time. I look at Miami's opportunities in scoring, and I'd say it's probably 60-40 Miami's fault rather than what Denver did well. Are you talking about just the shooters, or are we including Jimmy Butler and Bam in this? Yeah, no, everybody. I would say it's probably 70-30 Miami just missing shots. I, I shouldn't say missing shots that they've made this entire postseason, but this was the Denver Nuggets that we saw in the regular season and for mo- in the entire Western Conference bracket, yeah. and this was the heat that we saw in the regular season, right? This is, what, this is the conversation we had. All regular season long was, boy, it just feels like an, a pedestrian night from Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, and Miami shooters weren't making shots, and and yeah. we're six games over five hundred. Right. That was it. This was regular season Miami Heat at home, and you know i I don't know what it I don't know what it is about being at home. I don't think it's anything about the home crowd. I think that I actually thought the crowd tonight was awesome, Incredible. but I think maybe this team just sort of relaxes a little bit at home because I I actually think one of the reasons they're this far is because they've started every series on the road. And I think this team relishes that opportunity to just go on the road and just lock in like these little mini bubbles in Milwaukee and New York in Boston and now, and then in Denver, and they could just sort of like focus on basketball and they get home. And I just feel like it, they, they just kind of sink into their couch a little bit. Yeah. You know, Eric Spolster made an interesting point about like the, the short turnaround, you know, there's been several days of rest in between games one through three so far in between games three and four, there's just Thursday, Day and tomorrow both teams will be practicing they'll be back at it on friday for game four and spo said you know what our, our guys just want to get out there they want to go compete yet again that might help miami you hope anyway yeah. that's the, that's the feeling is that at least you, you don't have to you put it behind you you don't concentrate on what happened you look forward to what's next be more aggressive continue to work on on your shot making ability and see what happens and get physical and win those 50 50 balls that eric spolster kept talking about yeah, too that was a big point from him yeah and that wasn't the my takeaway from this game i but i do tend to just look at the pure shot making I, I i guess i'm i i don't have a trained eye i suppose but um i also look kayla martin 10 points christian brown 15 points that was and those were the two best like non big two guys yeah. in these games and then you kind of go down the, the list and it, it just Look, it's, it's Kevin Love six points, Aaron Gordon eleven points, it's Gabe Vincent seven points, it's you know Bruce Brown five points, Contavious Caldwell Pope six points. Like the Nuggets just got it from other places even more than Miami got it, and then obviously they're two they stars struggled from the three point range too. They weren't very good; I mean, they were only with twenty something. They were five of eighteen. Yeah, but they didn't have to be good from three point range because they were paint. If they're I'm, again not good at math here, if they're five of eighteen, that's twenty 
28% from three-point range, but they right. shot 51% overall. Is that like 120% from two-point range? Something like that. That's the game. You're not too far off. 